Hey guys, Michael from Fire and Brilliance, and today's episode, we will be talking and comparing three gemstones that are extremely popular these days. Obviously, moissanite, natural diamonds, and lab diamonds. What's the difference? Well, how are they the same? What's the pros and cons? How should you debate whether or not you want to buy one or the other? I'm gonna get right into it for you. So when comparing moissanite, a lab diamond, and a natural diamond, I'll give you seven points to compare it when you are deciding on which one you should purchase. Now, first and foremost, if you are into the hardness of a gemstone, basically a natural diamond and a lab diamond are both made of almost 100% carbon. So in the Mohs scale, which measures the hardness of a gemstone or a mineral, it's going to be a 10 out of 10, making it the hardest gemstone. So regardless if it's a lab diamond or a natural diamond, it's still a diamond at the end of the day. So therefore, the hardness is the same, which is a 10 out of 10. A moissanite, on the other hand, is the second hardest gemstone next to only that of diamonds. It's a nine and a quarter out of 10 to a nine and a half out of 10, and that's a moissanite. So in this case, a diamond is harder than moissanite. Now, if you are going to compare point number two, which is the fire and the brilliance, that is the sparkliness, the sparkliness factor that shines out of the gemstone and right into the eyes and why people love gemstones and jewelry. Now, in this case, moissanite has a higher refractive index than that of natural diamonds and lab diamonds, and therefore, the fire and the brilliance of a moissanite is higher and better than that of a diamond and a natural diamond. So when you're comparing a lab diamond and natural diamond, first things you want to know is they're basically the same thing. The only difference is one is man-made versus one can be uncovered in Mother Earth. One is mined and one isn't. So if you are going to choose between a man-made gem or a natural gemstone, one impo very important factor for many people that have inquired with us over the years is this. Is it mined or is it man-made? Because of the fact that a mined gemstone has a huge environmental impact on the environment in which it is mined in. So if that is important to you, then a natural diamond is definitely mined. A lab diamond and a moissanite is man-made, created in a lab, and is not mined. Uh, so it limits the environmental impact compared to that of its natural alternative. Fourth point here is the color. Now the color of a natural diamond as well as a lab diamond and a moissanite when comparing clear and white stones to a warm stone based on the GIA diamond scale from a D to a Z, a D being the whitest gemstone, a Z being the warmest of the color range, both or all three of these gemstones, a moissanite, a diamond, and a natural diamond can range between all of that color range. So they're all the same. So in, in other words, they're all equal in terms of color. So if you're into very white gemstones in the D side of things, you can choose that for moissanite diamonds, natural diamonds, as well as lab diamonds. And if you're into a very warm stone, you can also choose that as well for moissanite, natural diamonds, as well as lab diamonds. And point number five. Now, when choosing gemstones, you don't want to be limited to just the type because when you're wearing a gemstone, there are other factors of the gemstone as well, such as the shape and the size. Uh, in other words, you could buy a round shape, a marquee shape, an oval, a cushion, a radiance, an emerald, and you have it all the multiple shapes of gem different gemstones. For a moissanite, a lab diamond, as well as a natural diamond, there are many, many, many different cuts, as well as many different shapes. So in this specific aspect of uh, your decision-making process of which gemstone you should choose, all of these gemstones do come in a variety of different shapes and sizes so that you can choose it based on your own taste and preference. So the sixth point is, is a moissanite, a lab diamond, and a natural diamond a commonly accepted uh, gemstone worn on jewelry? If you were to ask us 10 years ago or even 20 years ago, anything lab created was not very common at all. 
Uh, it was all naturals, so natural sapphires, natural diamonds, natural, uh, you, what, you name it, natural rubies, emeralds, uh, you know, topaz, you name it. They were all mostly naturals about 20 years ago. Fast forward in the last 10 years or so, as the day goes on, lab-created gemstones are becoming more and more popular. And in some cases, they're even more popular now than natural gemstones. So yes, all three, all three options here, moissanite, lab diamonds, as well as natural diamonds are all commonly worn these days, very accepted throughout the world, and is very, very popular. So regardless of what your preference is, regardless if it's man-made or lab-created, or if it's mined, and uncovered from Mother Earth, they're all worn all over the place and everyone loves. It just really depends on your preference and taste. And the last point, point number seven, the most important point for many, many, many people is the price point, right? Uh, so which one is the most expensive? relative to the best bang for your buck, relative to what you get out of it. So if I'm going to spend X amount of dollars, what am I getting for this gemstone? What am I getting from a moissanite? What am I getting from a lab diamond? And what am I getting from a natural diamond? Well, if you are going to compare all three gemstones, the most budget-friendly gemstone is a moissanite. The second most budget-friendly gemstone is the lab diamond and a natural diamond is going to be the most expensive option, at least as of today. That said, a moissanite and a lab diamond, the reason why these price points can be lower than a natural diamond is because it can be mass produced. It's made in a lab. It's actually made by man. And anything that is made by man can be mass produced, which will eventually lower costs over time. And therefore, you can get these gemstones, these gorgeous gemstones, for a much lower price than a natural diamond, which has to be mined, uncovered, cut, and therefore it requires many more processes and many more layers of labor, uh, which will spike up the prices. But that being said, as of today, in today's world, with so much competition in the lab-created space versus the natural diamond created space, it's starting to force natural diamonds to go down because of competition, because of the huge abundance of acceptance in the lab created world uh, from the current um, environment of jewelry purchases, lab uh, natural diamond sellers and suppliers are starting to reduce their prices because they are starting to understand that's very hard to compete. Uh, they're going kind of head to head at the moment and therefore if you actually are into natural diamonds, uh, then you may want to start looking into those prices. Although they are very still very expensive, the prices of those natural diamonds are starting to drop. So in other words, if a moissanite's price is uh, price X, a lab diamond is going to be anywhere between three to five times that price of a moissanite. And a natural diamond may be anywhere between 10 to 20 times the price of that moissanite currently. Okay, so that is how you're going to compare it. Relative, if you are going to compare apples to apples, make sure that the quality is the same, the color, cut, clarity, and all of that's the same when comparing prices. I hope you guys really like what you saw there. I know that I've gone over these comparisons in the past and if you've been following our channel, you may already know this information. However, it's always nice to have a refresher, especially an updated refresher in a simple form and that's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, let us know what you like, let us give us a suggestion for a future episode and we may make an episode just for you. So thanks so much for following us here on YouTube, but we are also available on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, as well as Twitter. So definitely go there and give us a follow for more fire and brilliance jewelry content. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.